Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the Chair and Vice Chair of Harlow Council. Like they weren't shipping like they were before. 
And the first will be remembered to the evening at the playhouse was just magnificent. When Jennifer the Lord left town, she came and she was really impressed with the whole thing. So that was a very good day total. Rain Deer, Sparks, Parking. We went to the, public, uh, the um, Prince Alexander Hospital and she stood outside where the restaurant is in, in um, the gated area and you could see people's faces when they were coming down that path thinking that is not a Rain Deer standing. And she was wonderful. And um, the staff adored her, but unfortunately the children were going to get, let her see and um, they were on oxygen from the dolphin wash, so they couldn't attend. But we got children from the nursery and some of the others parents let them come over. Pictures were taken of the law. She was really, they wanted to keep her. She was an absolute hit. So I thoroughly, and Justin from the Pets Corner, he was wonderful because he suggested it in the first place. So that was a very good talk. Sports Awards um, at the Civic Centre here. Um, Joe Hart and of course the netball, they won on Sunday night the um, best team. I think I'm quite sure. I was at the BBC. Um, so yes, she was one of those that we had, um, and it, that was a very worthwhile night. Duke of Kent came to Astral Lighting on the 28th to get a Queen's Award. That was very impressive as well, and thoroughly um, enjo you know, enjoyed, and they thoroughly deserved that. Uh, Education Awards on the 5th of December, here again. There was a lot more children and parents here this time than before, and um, Mike Beard from um, Public Health did a speech and he said did the awards and he was fantastic. He was very impressed with the, the parents and the children hard. I said that potentially all of them could be working in public health when children were older and the parents as well. So that was a very, very worthwhile meeting. Panto public at the playhouse on the 30th well, but that was absolutely magnificent. Um, it was the best pantomime I've ever seen in Harlow and it was really, really good. Um, I can't praise that enough. Making Steps Showcase at Potter Street on the 9th of December, that was really good as well with the, the young people doing a fantastic job there. So that was what I wanted to bring forward. And reminders, January 30th, celebrate Harlow at the Playhouse, my charity do. As many of you that can come, got to come to that. It's going to be fantastic as well. We put some really good apps on and it's quite versatile, the different apps we are putting on. And the dinner dance on the 22nd of March at the Rugby Club. Again, I want to count us there. Um, and that's going to be a good night, and it's at the Rugby Club, so we're supporting them as well. Okay, that's everything from, from the chair side of it. Um, now we've got item five, petition to <coughs> public none. Um, questions from the public. Uh, Mr. Foreman, can you come forward and do you want to read your question out? Right, so the Ladies' House of Commons Work and Pensions Committee 19 to report on benefit sanctions highlights the lack of detailed research on the effects sanctions have on claimants' well-being. The report concludes that the Welfare, Welfare Reform Act 2012 and subsequent changes have made sanctions longer, more severe and applicable to more people than ever before. The failure to evaluate the 2012 reforms is unacceptable. It's time for the government to urgently evaluate the effectiveness of reforms to welfare conditionality and sanctions introduced since 2012, including an assessment of sanctions' impact on people's financial and personal well-being. Consequently, will the portfolio holder for community and well-being publicly state what she and her Labour administration will do to a assess the impact of sanctions on the well-being of Harlow's benefit claimants and on the council's finances, publicise the rights and methods of appeal benefit claimants have when facing a sanction, c provide additional support to sanctioned claimants through the council's welfare panel, and d bring forward a motion to full council making demands of the Conservative government to gather full statistics of the sanctions being applied by the DWP and to initiate a full investigation of the effects of sanctions on people's financial and personal well-being. Thank you, Mr. Foreman, for the question. The Council recognises the study undertaken by the Working Pensions Committee and the report it has produced specifically relating to benefit sanctions as referred to in the question. 
I would also like to make reference to the work already undertaken by the Council Scrutiny Committee over the past 12 months, which has focused on the impacts of the rollout of universal credits in Harlow, and the work it has done with the Job Centre Plus to understand the impacts and the issues for local residents. It is important to recognise that the Working Pensions Committee report specifically focuses on those benefits administered by the Department of Works and Pensions, DWP, and it, its focus is not on areas of the benefit system which fall to the responsibility of local authorities. The benefits administered by the Council, namely housing benefit and local council tax support, do not have claimant commitments nor sanctions contained within their supporting legislation. Whilst the Council may be privy to some of the outcomes and impacts of sanctions applied to claimants through the direct contact it has with the local residents, its ability to assess the full impact of sanctions is very limited. Data relating to sanctions imposed is solely held by the DWP to which the Council has no direct access. The Works and Pensions Committee report describes the lack of review of sanctions since their introduction in 2012 as being unacceptable and calls for the government to urgently evaluate the effectiveness of reforms to conditionality and sanctions. I fully support this recommendation and look towards the publication of the findings of the <coughs> DWP review. I especially support the recommendations that the application of sanctions to specific, specific vulnerable claimants, especially those with limited capability for work, care leavers and single parents. It is the, the Council's understanding that all claimants subject to sanctions are fully advised in the sanctions notifications they receive of their full appeal rights. Whilst the Council could publicise claimants' rights appeals, appeal rights on its website, it would be difficult to ensure that any such content was up to date as the Council does not set the rules and has no control over any amend amendments or updates to those rights. The Housing Welfare Panel's remit is limited to specific cases, namely Council tenants, who have breached the terms of existing county court possession orders, and many of the cases the panel deals with will not involve tenants who are subject to DWP sanctions. The panel does, however, inform tenants of the availability of advice from relevant support agencies where issues are identified. It should be noted, however, that the panel does not have the authority to alter any payment terms ordered by the county court or the terms of any sanctions imposed by the DWP. The Council does offer some support and its discretionary housing payments, DHP, which are administered by its Revenues and Benefits Service. DHP can be awarded to support customers in receipt of housing benefit or universal credit who have been sanctioned and are str struggling to maintain their rental payment. In addition, where a claimant is sanctioned, their income is reduced for the purposes of calculating that Council tax support, which increases the award and their council tax payments are much lower, helping to reduce any financial hardship. The council believes that the recommendations made in the report should be implemented by the DWP, and findings resulting from it made public to help influence and change the conditionality and sanctions introduced in the 2012 Act. It believes this work should be undertaken in the first instance, and that if this is carried out, the core issues identified within the question posed should and will be addressed. Rapporteur, special rapporteur for extreme poverty, <coughs> concluded in his report that poverty is a political choice and that austerity could easily have spared the poor if uh, the political will question, had please. existed to do so. The question is, do you think that this report is the modern day equivalent of the ghost of Christmas past for the Conservative government? From Philip Alston, special rapporteur. Thank you. Of household is in receipt of out of work benefits within the past year. Thank you, Mr. Wake. Um, the council reviews its local tax support scheme each year, as set out in, as set out in the original report when the scheme was introduced. There were significant government funding cuts of 10% when compared to the funding provided for the abolished council tax benefits. <coughs> Okay. As set out at the time, the Council and the other precepting bodies in Essex were not able to absorb this reduction, and hence the local scheme design includes claimant contributions that are reduced by 76%. As detailed in the most recent report regarding the 2019-20 LCTS scheme proposals, the Council's funding has continued to reduce at a faster rate than the reduction in the cost of the LCTS scheme, 
with the result that the Council of now subsidises the LCTS scheme by over £400,000 per annum. Having carried out the annual review in preparation for the 2019-20 scheme, it is not possible to further reduce the direct burden of council tax on out-of-work households. However, the council does consider specific cases of hardship and help support those residents in greatest need as a result of this and other government welfare changes wherever possible. With respect, it seems to me you have not actually answered the question, so I repeat the question. Has the council carried out a study of the feasibility of reducing the council tax burden of households and sick and work benefits within the past year? Uh, thank you, Mr. Wake. Um, we carry out a review every year. We did again this year as we have in previous years. I do. Okay. Oh, speed things up a bit. Yeah. There you go. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have no supplementary so on that. I'll have no supplementary. Sorry, I'll probably wait for Mr. Ingalls to... Yeah, the answer's been taken to everyone. Um, I have no supplementary. I just look forward to the money of the motion. And your second question, do you also take that as read? Yes. Okay. And Councillor Ingalls, yeah. yeah. And supplementary on that? Uh, yes, I can't see why decision. I cannot see why the answer is no, because we have numerous motions put by this council about the things that Essex County Council are doing. And perhaps we may, if we come up... And your see, question is... Well, if we... Why... Why hasn't... Why... Is the answer no? Because surely we should be looking to become a unity of forestry where we might be able to get our better, right, okay. better care of our roads right, and okay. things that are, are yeah. come under Essex right. County Council. Okay. <coughs> Why is the answer no? The answer is no because. Um, yes, at the moment, there aren't any plans for Harlow to become the unitary authority. <coughs> I can't really hear it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hunt. Okay. Um, that's that. Thank you. 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 Thank yeah, good evening everyone. Um, Essex Library is at the heart of your community. That's what you'll find written on the front of our library cards and it's something I've had in my mind when I was thinking about what to say on this motion regarding the potential library closures by Essex County Council that will affect libraries here in Harlow and across Essex. It felt important for me to propose this motion today to try and help save these hearts of our communities. The people I've been recently elected to represent but also for sentimental reasons myself and personal experiences that I wouldn't have had, wouldn't have been able to have were it for these potential closures to happen earlier on in my life. Growing up in a low income, single parent working family, the libraries were a place that my sister and I could go after school to take advantage of the free activities and homework clubs that they had to offer. Knowing we were safe and being looked out for by a group of amazing library staff, my mum was able to complete her working days without having to worry about where we were or having to pay for expensive childcare costs. In the school holidays, I would often complete the library reading challenges, and I know that from an early age, access to the library services and a wide range of books that I could read for free definitely developed my love for reading, which then encouraged me to go on to study and get a degree in English literature. I know I'm not the only one with personal and positive experiences that I can take away from the library services, but maybe even time the rhyme time to reading groups, chess clubs, drop-in advice sessions, knitting clubs, the list goes on and on. Our, vitals play a, our libraries play are a vital hub for free activities that can, go, that can often help with isolation and encourage people to get out of the house. I would just quickly like to thank Emma, a local Harlow resident and new mum, who in light of the news about the closures, has set up social media pages to let people in the town know what's going on at their libraries, which I hope becomes a vital source for the library closures town-wise if they don't end up going ahead. Not only does the library offer 
books and free groups. They're also a lifeline for people who may not have access to the internet at home, whether it be to search for jobs, do their online banking, apply for benefits, or just keep in contact with family members who may live far away. With all that in mind, I'd also like to say that one of the few places, or maybe the only place in our high streets and shopping areas, where residents can go to socialise, meet new people, or even just exist without having to spend any money at all, which is crucial now, especially in these times of devastating austerity. I'm proud to see Harlow Labour and our parliamentary candidate, Laura, fronting the campaign to help save the libraries in Harlow. And it's been amazing to see the different activism of library users within the Save Our Library Sessions <coughs> campaign to help try and fight this closure. Even the other weekend, a brilliant demonstration was held outside the Great Carnden Library where Harlow's Essex County Councils were due to hold a surgery. They didn't even manage to show up, which makes it clear that these so-called representatives of our town aren't willing to be held to account when it comes to these hard disclosures across the county. So I just want to finish on this. I'd welcome any Tory councillors and Harlow MP Robert, Harlow, Harlow's MP Robert Halford to join Harlow Labour's campaign to save the town's libraries and to stand up against these devastating cuts that are being caused by fellow party councillors sitting on Essex County Council. And if any of our le elected representatives fail to see how these community hubs provide a vital service to the people living in the town, they need to take a long, hard think and reconsider whether they're cut out to be a representative of our community. So please support this motion this evening and show solidarity with those whose libraries are an important part of their day-to-day -day life. And as I said before, keeping a lifeline, I move this motion. Um, we do now have an amendment from um, the group and um, poser is Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. And seconder is um, John. Thank you, Chair. And, and can I start by welcoming Councillor Jezard and congratulating her on a, a motion on her, her first night. That's far more than I have managed all those years ago on my first night, so congratulations. <coughs> and I've got to say, I, I agree with the basis of the motion, and that's why we're moving a, a positive amendment to support this motion. Um, let it not be said by anyone, and I know it has been said by people around this town, uh, people on the left in politics, um, that Harlow Tories are actually in favour of closure libraries. That's just not true. And I would point everyone to the rather scathing uh, review that uh, Robert Halfway MP gave in the House of Commons um, to this proposal. Um, it, libraries are an important part of life, and I, I think um, Councillor Jezard has, has highlighted that. Um, and I too have very fond memories, particularly of the Town Centre Library uh, as a child. What I do recognise, though, Chair, is that although I love libraries, it's actually been some years since I've actually been in one. Um, and I think that does mean that there do need to be some changes to libraries. I'm, I'm maybe going off track a little bit here, but I think libraries do need to move with the times and, and produce an offer that is attractive to all potential users. Um, maybe something a bit more than they're offering at the moment. However, um, to move on with the amendment, um, I often believe it's not just the best thing to stand and wave a placard and object to something, um, but to offer uh, constructive uh, and helpful suggestions on how we can work as partners with people like the County Council um, to achieve our right, our common aims. Uh, and in the, uh, this obviously, I think, is the aim of both sides of the chamber to make sure that these proposals, which are currently out for consultation, do not come to fruition. Um, and that we save and keep libraries in, in this town. So what we've done here is attempted to put together just some ideas that could be added to this letter um, that's, that's going to be sent to uh, the County Council to suggest how Harlow Council can help and to suggest as part of their consultation things that they may not have considered, like talking about cross-county solutions. For, for those who have seen Harlow, uh, Hartford is not very far away uh, and it, it would not be silly to think about those cross county solutions. We need to be talking to the county about how we can share the use of buildings. Uh, when we signed that memorandum of understanding that's up on the, uh, the wall over there, um, between Epping Forest um, and between um, uh, Artisan District Council, we were already talking years ago, across both um, colours of political parties, how we can share facilities between councils. And sharing between a district council and a county council is, is no different. In fact, I believe um, one of the buildings that's in question is actually owned by um, this council, but rented by this council. There are plenty of opportunities for this council to help to open dialogue with the county council. 
And rather than just waving a placard in the county's face, which may indeed cause a reaction that you do not want, it may be better to open that dialogue with, uh, with, with the county council and to make sure that we try and help secure these facilities for our, for our town. Indeed, and I, there, there may even be the way, some ways of um, making financial contributions, whether that be direct finance or whether that be, uh, as I say, by buildings, uh, via land swaps, um, by the ability to use buildings that we already have in our portfolio. Uh, and I think um, Councillor Charles will speak in a minute about uh, uh, the, the excitement around potential independent public service mutuals, um, which have been proven to work in other areas. I think, Chair, I want to leave you with the thought that this is um, Harlow Conservative is trying to be, in the spirit that you spoke of in the opening of this meeting, trying to be helpful, trying to be open, and trying to show goodwill to all men. Welcoming the, welcoming the motion, but also seeking to improve it uh, and to get colleagues at county to listen to that. Um, I'll add one final point, Chair, and that's something I haven't included in the amendment because I'm not so sure how um, it would be taken. But if you want the county council to listen, it may be better to not just have the leader of the county to write but to show cross-party support on this issue and to have both leaders, the leader of the council and the leader of the opposition, right to the leader of the council. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I wonder if uh, Councillor Johnson could actually read the amendment, because I'm conscious of being read at the and he uh, may not be aware. Uh, the amendment to the library's motion proposed by Councillor Andrew Johnson and seconded by Councillor Joel Charles. Um, right. to, re to insert words so that the motion reads, this council joins Robert Halpin MP in being concerned by Essex County Council's consultation on plans to close public libraries in Harlow. Libraries are vital to promoting literacy and fostering a love of reading amongst all people. They are used by preschool children taking their first steps towards reading, those at the other end of the school journey, and by young adults studying for their exams. Libraries also provide essential services for the least developing society, providing computer access to people looking for jobs and accommodation, completing universal credit forms, and those filling out online school admission applications. This council believes that library closures run counter to the county's health and wellbeing agenda, and therefore requests that the leader of the council writes to the county council, urging it to keep all of Harlow's libraries open, and offers Harlow Council's support and advice to achieve this by investigating grouping all affected libraries together as part of a county-wide independent public service mutual, supported by an anchor revenue generator to ensure the sustainability of this type of model, suggesting a cross-county solution for districts on the Hertfordshire border, opening talks about the shared use of district council facilities, work to, it to secure local assurances about maintaining ongoing access to the county-wide library management system, and offering financial contributions, including support to deliver alternative revenue propositions and the potential for the co-location of services. Charles, do you want to... Um, I, I, shall I reserve my right to speak? Thanks. Councillor Well, Chair, I <coughs> have no intention of sewing in the towel at this early stage. We simply need to keep our libraries open. It was very apparent when we went to the public consultation <coughs> that uh, the Vice Chair uh, was already prepared to sew in the towel at the meeting, talking about uh, his intentions uh, for Great Harmon. In fact, it was such an important issue for the four county councils that represent us although to his credit, my guardian to the Tony Clive Souter, the other two county councillors absented themselves, uh, as one of them still absents himself uh, tonight. In fact, the same one, Councillor Eddie Johnson, uh, who absented himself... Yeah, right, councillor, not have that from right. Councillor Now, let me go on, Chair. Uh, uh, sorry, hang on, sorry. He doesn't know why Councillor Johnson... I can tell you why Councillor Johnson is. Councillor Johnson already had a, an issue tonight representing the, the county council, which is the vice chairman, at a, a, a civic event across the other side of the county, and it was this council which chose to move this meeting to a date that he didn't know, wasn't able to make. Okay. I think it's ridiculous that Councillor Dan was keeps having a go at Eddie just because he's representing the county like, council. Okay, what did I say when we started off this evening? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, right. Okay. Right. Okay. That sort of language has no place in this chamber. We do not want to... That sort of attitude from Councillor Dams has no place in this chamber. Councillor Johnson, I have raised my voice to you. Okay, right. Now, I'm in charge of this now. 
and we've had an explanation which we wouldn't, didn't really need anyway of why Councillor Johnson's not here. So that was not um, a very good attitude to have. Now, we're going to calm down and we're going to start again on both sides. Okay? This is a council meeting. It is not a big problem. Okay. So, Councillor Danvers, have you finished your comment? No, I've already just started. Right, so can you please... Um, I, I don't use... Say. Unlike uh, Councillor Johnson, I hope he doesn't tell you personally because it's just what he said. I do use the library um, quite regularly. And in fact, the other thing I use the library for at the store is in fact for our own uh, monthly uh, surgery, where we see the computers always being used in that, that store library. Uh, we see children actually leading their parents into that library because of the arrangements uh, with the school. We see the elderly people coming in, also not just to change their books, to, to have a chat. It's very much uh, a social uh, hub indeed. And the idea that it should actually be closed. Why are these libraries being closed up and down Essex? For the want of £1 million out of a budget of £13 million in the library budget. Right, we're discussing the amendment, uh, not And the in those circumstances, I, I didn't Stand preface you. my remarks by saying I don't want to throw in the towel at this early stage. We need to actually make sure that we keep our libraries open. And therefore, in terms of uh, the, 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 the amendment, uh, I, I don't think it's appropriate at this stage. If they continue on this path, perhaps we'll have to, by the autumn, think of that. And to actually associate our MP, who has continually voted in Parliament to withdraw funding from local authorities year on year on year, the hypocrisy of the double standards of our MP doing one thing in Parliament, and yet again actually then advocating something else. It's, 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 it's always what he's doing. He's, he actually wants to be on every bandwagon uh, that's going. But when he, he, he votes in Parliament, he votes for something uh, very different. Uh, so I'm not clear where the county councillors are coming from. I hope they reveal their hand uh, tonight because it represents 25% of the Conservative group. And in those circumstances, will they be voting against this? when it comes up in January and February at the County Council meeting. Okay. Thank you very much and I'm speaking to the uh, amendment. Um, it's disappointing that we've received this amendment because this is a serious and significant motion and it does appear to have been watered down by nothing more than a self-congratulation opportunity for our MP and to Robert's credit he doesn't need any more publicity he's doing a great job doing that promoting himself <laughs> over, over this issue but let's not forget this amendment that has been attached to this motion is very simple it's actually about a Tory cut it's a Tory cut made by a Tory controlled county council that Tory county council has had to make that Tory cut because of the Tory government. Yeah, yeah. As Mike Danvers has actually said quite elegantly about those particular issues. So we know this government is hell-bent on destroying local services. And for us to now stand together and somehow congratulate our accountable electable <coughs> MP to saying well done is simply not acceptable. He is the ambassador of this government and he has to stand and take responsibility and accountability for that. Looking at the amendment itself, um, certainly the second part of it fear gives me absolute fear. Because when we start talking about independent public service mutuals, that brings back to me what this government has done to the National Health Service by claiming that we're bringing in non-for-profit organisations which squeezes and destroys services. It also brings fear to me because this is the start of what has happened in education as well, where education is being privatised by companies and their other services. And then we want to work in partnership with Hertfordshire, who are already closing their libraries at the same time. So where would we find that mutuality? I don't know. This amendment that needs to be rejected 
appears to be a panic measure by the Tories to show that they care. And they don't. And why should we pretend otherwise? It's about standing together, about rejecting this amendment, and working, as we say, in common endeavour. Express our collective concerns, which I do support Andrew with. Regardless of politics, I agree with Andrew with that. But we should stand as a community, as political people, with one united voice. If we believe in our community, if we believe in our services, then we should believe in our libraries and the services they protect. So please, let's forget this and drop the amendment and let's get on to the real debate, which is about protecting and supporting vital local services. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to speak to the amendment on a couple of points very quickly. Firstly, to reiterate what's been said, but it would be absolutely crazy for us to support an amendment which suggests we would make a financial contribution to the County Council, which has had its budgets cut by the, the, the central government. I mean, we just, that's just crazy. Um, secondly, to say we don't want to, as Mike said, throw in the towel, we want to save the libraries. We just want to save the libraries. We don't want a different model. We think libraries as a community service, as a service to the public, is the correct thing to have. And if you look at evidence in other countries, in Australia and the States and Canada, library use is thriving. It is growing. So what we actually need is investment in our libraries. That is what we really need. Um, and finally, I just want to say that um, I support the, the, the um, motion as it was written and I cannot uh, support the amendment in any shape or form. Councillor uh, Thank you, Chair. Oh my, uh, what an interesting start to the debate on libraries. Um, first of all, I have to say to the Labour group, Robert Halfon, first and foremost, is an ambassador for our town in Parliament and he stands up for Harlem. But I will have more to say in the substantive debate uh, in a moment. What we're proposing tonight in our amendment is a fleet of options because the administration provided no solutions to actually progressing towards the Essex County Council. It's all well and good to protest about these matters, but as community leaders, we are elected actually to resolve solutions and come up with solutions, work with our community to see a path forward. And I must stress tonight but this is a cold consultation. No decisions have been finally made yet. And actually, I think the proactive approach for us as a council chamber tonight would be to support the measures that we have put forward. I think that Harlow Council is in a very strong position tonight if we work on a cross-party basis to actually negotiate with Essex County Council about the way forward in the consultation. So there are a range of options actually that have been tested across the country that we could use as a model. The first um, point I want to make on the amendment is the idea around the public service mutual that has been used in county councils like Devon. Uh, their Libraries Unlimited scheme began in 2016 and is very successful. And actually a model like that, where you look at the tier four, as Essex County Council have defined, the 25 libraries, of which Ty Green, and uh, Mark calls library sit with it. We could have a discussion with Essex County Council constructively about how we look at the future of our library services and the smaller libraries that make up an important part of our community. What I would also say is this, all the conservatives on this bench support our libraries. We stand up for our libraries, and tonight you will hear in the substantive motion our views on it. We don't need the Labour Party to articulate how we feel about our community assets in this community. I think it's quite wrong, the members opposite, to suggest that we don't believe in actually standing up for our libraries because they are an important community asset. The other point I would make is this. The party opposite are in administration. You've got to get out of protest mode and you've got to start leading. You've got to start coming up with ideas. We've given you some, some, some suggestions constructively tonight to work on a cross-party basis. And if you reject them, what have we got left? We've got nothing. So actually take this argument to Essex County Council. If you have an option tonight to work on a cross-party basis, I hope you very much consider it. Um, Councillor We move into the vote. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to uh, agree that we should 
it, where it's necessary, work with other authorities, even for myself, to work with conservative <coughs> councils. And of course, over the last few years, that's exactly what we have been doing. We've been working with East Hearts District Council, Uttersford District Council, Epping Forest District Council, Roxbourne Council, Hertfordshire County Council, and Essex County Council, and the government to produce a local plan. There's only one small group of people who weren't prepared to cooperate at all with that joint working, and in fact insisted on having a recorded vote, and that's the people sitting opposite. They're not interested in working with us. What they're interested in right, is cover up the fact that the Tories are going to close libraries. Thank you, Chair. I just want to pick up on a couple of points. I'll be very quick. Um, <laughs> Councillor Charles says no decisions have been made. This is a consultation. Mm -hmm. I attended one of the um, consultation events. Um, there will not be there from the Conservative side. And <coughs> it was made very, very clear by Councillor Barker that with regard to two of our libraries, the decision was made. They were closing. Consultation or otherwise. Um, Councillor Charles say we are the administration. We are the administration for Harmony. These libraries are run and administered and paid for by Essex. We are the opposition. We protest at Essex's cuts because you won't. <coughs> you say we offer no solutions. Here's my solution. Essex are taking at least the same money next year from the council tax that we levy, as they did this year. So my solution is, spend the money that you spent on the libraries last year, <laughs> next year, and keep them open. It's a very neat solution that encompasses everything that's needed. Let's keep our libraries open. Let's stop the cuts. Thank you. Do you want to um, sum up on this one? Okay. okay. I think one comes to the vote now. Those in favour of this amendment, raise their hands, please. Those against. <coughs> okay. Right, so that amendment is lodged. We now come back. Chair, can I move an amendment to the motion, please? Okay. I'll right. second it. Uh, the amendment reads that after the, the last paragraph and offers the opportunity to the Leader of the Opposition to sign this letter. Can I second that? Yes, we agree. Right, so who agrees on that amendment? Agreed. 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 That's been agreed. Okay. So we now come back to the substantial question. Um, Thank you, Chairperson. I strongly condemn the decision by the Conservative Essex County Council to consider. The Council Manager Chair, not Chairperson. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Good start. I strongly condemn the decision by the Conservative Run Essex County Council to consider closing these libraries. I actually wrote down two of our libraries, but in the time since I've written this down, another one has been added to the list. This is, the decision to consider closing these libraries, I think, is an act of cultural vandalism and an indication that the government's protestation that austerity is over is a hollow half-truth. Libraries are about more, to, more than just books. They are community hubs, neutral venues for mental health groups to meet their clients, places for other than railway groups to have to meet, and places for our unemployed to train to get back into the workforce. Once again, we see the Tories taking away from the poorest and most vulnerable in their society, and this decision is yet more proof of the country, a council, council, a national government, and a party that knows the price of everything but the value of nothing. And just one more thing about protesting, not achieving anything. It is a hundred years since 
women got the vote. Uh, I had a placard waiver. I haven't got it with me today, but I guess it's enough to do. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, now I want to speak on the substantive motion. Look, I, I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to say how much I value the library service in this town. As a youngster, uh, I would attend Old Harlow Library to do my studies, and it was an important, useful facility, community facility for me when I was studying for my degree coming back at term time to actually access the library and find a quiet space uh, in Old Harbour. So I actually welcome parts of the Essex County Council consultation, particularly around Old Harlow, and casting it a tier two library as well used. Lots of people, particularly our ageing population in Old Harlow, use that library. It is an important community facility. I want to talk more widely, though, about some of the aspects of Essex County Council's consultation. There are elements of it that I do support. Um, I think it is right for the County Council to look at a 24 7 <coughs> online service. I think that's something that we can all agree with. And I also think it is important to um, take into consideration what public services must do in times gone by and times now in the future. They need to adapt. They need to adapt to the changing behaviours of society and put that offer to people that is attractive. We all have to do that in life, even if we're a public service or a private sector organisation. And that approach is really important when you're trying to engage with communities. I think we must also share a positive ambition for the library service in Harlow. And we need to make that case to Essex County Council, uh, loud and vocal. As I said earlier, and as Andrew has said very clearly, the Conservatives here are concerned about this matter, and we are in close dialogue with our colleagues at Essex County Council about the way forward. And we were hoping to, <coughs> to see cross-party consensus, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's also important to recognise what the Library Service does for young families, particularly children learning to read. Actually, the libraries are a gateway for young people to pick up their reading speed, actually open the world of fiction, history, and learn about their wider community and the wider history of their <coughs> town. And that's something that's always been important about our local library service. It's also an important community facility for older people. One of the big issues in our society at the moment is loneliness, and I know it affects young and older people, but actually the library service is a gateway for people to have a sense of community. And I think that Essex County Council will take that very seriously as they progress this consultation. One of the frustrating elements of this debate is actually the legislation. Now, local authorities are governed because it is a statutory service libraries by the uh, Libraries and Public Museums Act of 1964. And within that act, it says this, to provide a comprehensive an efficient library service for all persons. <coughs> One of the frustrations of that act, historically, has been that it doesn't define the geographical space upon which a library should sit. And actually, the catchment area is really important in this debate, because I notice in the consultation some of the rationale Essex County Council has given for its views on the Tier 4 categorisation of libraries. I think Mark Hall and Tigreen libraries are important community assets. And I can't say that loud enough from the Conservative group. In fact, the 25 libraries that have been categorised as Tier 4, um, I have to say that as a community we need to be very vocal about how we can approach this consultation and actually put constructive solutions to deal with some of the issues that have been brought up in this debate. We tried tonight to put forward a range of practical solutions that could begin the conversation with Essex County Council. Public service mutuals are a mechanism widely used across the country. There's something that we could have a constructive, a detailed conversation with Essex. Equally, I think it's incumbent upon Harlow Council as a community leader to engage with Essex County Council and not just put a placard up saying you're disappointed by the decision. We are community leaders. The administration tonight is negating its responsibility as a community leader by just going on a protest march 
and not actually entering into dialogue with Essex County Council. Now, our Member of Parliament, Parliament has been very clear about his opposition to this consultation. Okay, He's been loud seconds. and clear with the wider community through his speeches in Parliament that this, need, this situation needs to change. I hope tonight we can get back to a cross-party conversation and look forward <coughs> to defending our libraries constructively. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tony uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity now to speak to the substantive motion. And can I first of all congratulate that Charles Charles? Because actually, a lot of what he was saying in, in most of that debate was actually uh, very profound and very correct. It is about accessing the most vulnerable people in our society, those that are lonely, people with mental health and other issues. And we should not lose sight of that. Uh, I don't want to sound too creepy, but as it's Christmas, can I also welcome the comments made, or some of the comments made by Andrew Johnson? Uh, around what is the purpose and function of a building that is called a library. Uh, because um, it should be a learning environment, it should be for art, leisure, pleasure and access. And I think sometimes libraries are perceived as quite sterile areas that they only have one main function. So I do agree that there should be an opportunity for us to revisit in a collective way to try to and we energise those. And the reason I'm saying that is that a few years ago, both myself and Councillor Johnson had the pleasure of working with many colleagues in Europe under the European New Towns platform. And some of the projects that were funded through the Interreg were around community engagement. And in most European cities and towns that we went to and had a look at them, the library was in the heart of what they were talking around, around engagement. Now I know that Europe at the moment is a toxic subject, but I really do think that we should not be throwing everything out at the same time, and we should look as wide as we possibly can to find these solutions. And Harlow is good at solutions, and we don't need lectures from anybody. Look what we did when the Tories decided to turn the lights on. Look what they did when they cut the policing. We found local solutions that what is the what is our what our community uh, uh, wanted over these over these issues. So I do agree that with this motion, I think we need to set it out clear. I'm delighted with the amendment that it will be a collective rather than just the administration. And together, we need to go to County Council and say step back from this decision, let's get into relationships, let's get into partnership, and let's get a long-term solution for something that we treasure and we love, which is our local libraries. Thank you very much. Councillor Tony Edwards. First of all, I just wanted to look a bit at some of the stuff that's said in the, said in the consultation document. First thing is, we've got a period of consultation, but in terms of responses to the consultation, they're only being accepted if you put your comments online. And, um, I went to a debate, or not, I, met, I met with the uh, library staff the other day, I did a number of other, uh, other people, and were told that they had to put the comment, any comments had to be made online. So what does the consultation paper say? It says, um, on the one hand, it alludes to a saving of two million pounds. Um, it, 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 it will be tier three and tier two, uh, tier three and tier four proposals go ahead. On the other hand, when I was at uh, uh, County Hall, the officers and the uh, chair of the committee were saying that this wasn't a financially driven agenda. Well, if it's not a financially driven agenda, then what is it? They're looking to save two million quid out of a 12 million pound budget. It uses it as rationale. It says that library usage in terms of loans is going down. Well, there's certainly evidence of that. But it also says we do not have a full picture of library users. We do not have any data about the customers uh, using their needs without making uh, without, sorry, we do not have any data about customers using using their needs 
transactions, people studying, attending events, making friends, attending clubs. They don't have any data around that in terms of the way that those libraries are used. And in fact, the data that they are using relates to active users. And by active users, that means you have a library card. That's all it means. But a lot of people we know go in and out of libraries and use libraries in all, in all sorts of ways. The other thing they say is that uh, Essex is slightly overrepresented in the number of people that it has um, per, per thousand um, population in relation to national figures in terms of its library usage. In Harlow we have approximately um, one library to approximately 17,500 people as it stands at the moment. If these proposals go through, we'll have one library to every 45,000 people. That's the scale of the impact of the, of the cuts in, uh, in, in Harlow. So, what other bit of information do we have as far as Harlow is concerned? Harlow Town Centre has 6,700 active users. Great Pandan, 2,000 active users. Ty Green, 1,800. Old Harlow, 1,730 active users. But what's fascinating about that was I then looked at the figures in relation to the populations that use it. Mark Hall, 55% of the people that are the active users are under the age of 19. Thai Green is 65% under the age of 19. Great Pardon, 44%. Old Harlow, 49%. So we've got this, uh, a lot of use of the, of the people that are using it, each young people. So, and those are the people that we want to encourage, I presume, because we always go on in terms of Harlow so about you, literacy you and numeracy. Minute. Yeah, okay, literacy and numeracy. We, we talk about literacy and numeracy, and encourage literacy and numeracy. Then we then moved on to the indicators of deprivation. They say um, deprivation is a key driver. What they then go on, if you then look at I just remind ourselves, if in terms of child poverty, Bush Fair is 24% of people on child poverty, Staple Tide 29%, Mark Hall 30%. Can you start winding down? I am Old Harlow 14.8%. Yeah, Old Harlow is a tier 2 library, and the others are tier 3 and tier 4 libraries. And why is that? It's because of the quirk around the two mile rule. Old Harlow Library is Two miles, 2.3 miles away from the next nearest library. And because of that quirk, our old hollow library. The reduction of premises and the encouraging offender managers to get their offenders and take them to the libraries and do the work in the libraries. Mm -hmm. You know, and a similar thing happened in a lot of other the legislations that went round about that time. So I'm a bit confused as to where. Um, you know, they'll be where they'll be going to do the work to sit and do computer work, to do CV work, to do things like that. So I just mentioned that because um, that was quite a big thing for me, a concern at the time. Um, the other thing is the libraries are very much a hub, and I'm concerned about people with hidden disabilities, disabilities, you know, getting to a library that happens to be more than two miles away. Um, but also, you know, can they afford the bus there to come to the town centre? You know, we're talking about staple time where there are high levels of neglect. Uh, children, you know, on child protection plans, like a poverty. And Andrew, I was quite interested when you said, you know, I haven't been in the library for years. Well, you know, actually, we're quite privileged. A lot of the families in Harlow that I've dealt with in the past, in a previous role, are not that privileged. They haven't got Wi-Fi, they haven't got computers, they're having to go and go to the library to sign up for universal credit. So actually, we need to remember that a vast majority of our residents in Harlow are not as privileged as some of the people sitting in this room today. So, and in terms of disability and vulnerability, um, I just mentioned when we bang things about, 
it really hurts and that actually we have vulnerable people in our gallery today and we need to be very aware of that and I just wanted to make that last point. Thank you. Councillor Garnett. Uh, we actually, apart from the old one, we seem to have quite a lot of consensus here tonight. We're singing from the same song sheet. So I just wanted to clarify a couple, a couple of points, really. Um, nobody in this side of the chamber wants to see any libraries closed. Yeah. So, there's no ambi so there is no ambi ambiguity in this statement. We do not wish to read in next Thursday's Socialist Worker that members of the Conservative group are in favour of closing the library. <coughs> read my lips. We do not want any libraries to close. However, as custodians of the public purse, Essex County Council, or any other council, has from time to time to look at the services it provides and to see if there's a better way of using taxpayers' money. That is a responsibility, be it Essex County Council or Harlow District Council. The libraries in Harlow suffer from lack of use, be it vending books or computer use or any other use they are put to. Over the last 10 years, the Stowe, so the third Stowe's footfall has gone from over 51,000, you're telling me it's going up, everything's going up, they're going down, to, that was in 2007, to 18,000 in 2017. That's almost two thirds of uses lost for whatever reason. We, and I mean we, need to look at how best we can maintain the services we currently have and to make it fit for future use. Either through investment from the District Council or bringing community involvement in some way, some other viable scheme. Why should local people not be empowered to run them according to local, local requirements? Just a thought perhaps, instead of spending 650,000 on unwanted splash boards, spend some of the new home's bonus on library service. Yeah. Yeah. The Stone Building is owned by Harlow District Council and cost Essex County Council 16,000 per year in rent and rates. Why not put the building into a community trust with local people running the service with their own volunteers? All the books will be donated by Essex County Council and other services required can be negotiated. The time has come to stop wa waving placards and shouting insults. <coughs> Let us pull together and resolve this problem. Finally, remember this is a consultation exercise, not a done deal. Thank you, Chair. Just to answer a few of those points that uh, Councillor Garnett said, uh, 2007, the Stone Library was actually open seven, uh, six days a week. I uh, look at it, it's open now, so if you actually partly 50% open time, it's not a surprise uh, that, that, that that's the case. The other point, Chair, is that it's designated as a Tier 4 library. And when uh, Sue uh, Parker was actually asked uh, about this, uh, she said that there would be no books for Tier 4 libraries. So that was the start of the book there. Sue Parker also said a number of other things recently, quoted only a few days ago in the Housestead uh, Gazette. Mrs. Parker said, it's unfortunate that it's been so negative. That's the opposition, even amongst the Conservatives, um, that she's had to face. People are asking lots of questions. What I want is people to respond to the consultation. I don't need people to sign petitions. Um, that's why we're not putting petitions in libraries. <laughs> Doing a petition just says no. We don't want people to just say no. <laughs> um, but then it goes on a bit further on. The actual reporter actually challenges Mr. Parker about the Uttlesford Council meeting that she attended, where Uttlesford Council had a resolution opposing the closure of their libraries. Mrs. Barton admitted that she had attended the Uttlesford Council meeting and had voted in favour of the motion to save libraries in Thaxted and Stansted. If it wasn't so pathetic. <laughs> I just want to say, uh, Councillor Garnett, when I said library usage was going up, I was talking about the US where there has been investment. I didn't mean uh, in, in our areas. And I also wanted to just make a point. Um, uh, my colleague, uh, Tony, <laughs> Councillor Edward, uh, talked about the numbers of usage and, yes, 1,700 people using a library. But if you are one of those 1,700 people and you're registering for 
credits or welfare or school lunches. It doesn't matter that the numbers are going down, that service is critical to you. Thank you, Chair. I think we've heard during this debate from both sides of the chamber that there is a lot of libraries in this town and that no one wants to see the libraries closed. It saddens me that the Labour group couldn't bring themselves to support um, the amendment. I understand why. I also understand that for a number of members of the any excuse to have a go at a Tory, be it an MP, be it the government, be it the county councillor, be it people standing on this side, and that's their default modus operandi. Um, we are, I think whatever we've said tonight, we will still hear on the street and in literature from the opposition that um, we're again, we, we want libraries to close. We don't, I can categorically say that again, uh, and I will be more than happy to somewhat, if this motion passes tonight, as I'm sure it will, to sign a letter with the Councillor Engel, um, telling him to Council just what I think of them. I have consistently said in this chamber, it doesn't matter whether it's an MP, a County Council, or another District Council, just because they wear a blue rosette, I'm quite happy to criticise them if I think they are wrong. Uh, and I have publicly already made my, my contribution to this consultation. Uh, I do not want to see library services closed in this town. Um, since there have been political points made, I, I will just raise one item, and that's that this issue with libraries is one up and down the country. It's one that different councils face all the time. Uh, and I stand by what I said. Councillor Mason, you may have misinterpreted what I, what I was saying. The fact that I'm uh, fortunate enough uh, to have my services at home and I haven't been in the library in years. I would quite like to go in the library, but I've never found the excuse because there's been nothing there I've wanted to go and see. Mm. But if perhaps there was some uh, some public art on display, uh, if there were you know uh, any sorts of exhibitions as well as books, I'd be quite happy to go and, and walk and look at some of those things if they interested me. Um, but I do want to say to the party opposite, it's not just the Conservative Party, and please don't think that just because Essex is holding this consultation, it's the evil Tories alone. Um, because Bolton Council, five libraries, this is in the last six years, Bradford Council, one library, Brent Council, six libraries, Flintshire, two libraries, Hartlepool, two, Lambeth, one, Leeds, 13, Lewisham, one, Liverpool, three, Manchester, two, Wakefield, two, Waltham Forest, two, Wigan, one. These are just examples of libraries that have been libraries that have been closed, and all of those councils were Labour-run councils at the time. I think that's sad that those that those libraries were closed. I think it would be sad if any libraries were closed around Essex as well. Uh, and that's why, despite the fact that you've played politics with our amendment tonight, you didn't want to mention Robert. You're always having a go at any Tory just because we're Tories. I will personally be voting for your motion. <coughs> I will be then signing the letter with Councillor Ingle. Councillor Ingle, and then Councillor Hughes. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for Councillor Johnson and Councillor Charles. You spoke about um, working cooperatively. You know I speak uh, on an informal basis with the MP when it suits and benefits the Parliament. <coughs> and you know that our amendment invited you as Conservatives to sign this letter, and I'm grateful that you will do so. I think that's very clear evidence of us seeking to work cooperatively. Okay. Um, however, um, let me just talk about trying to work cooperatively with Essex County Council. When I met with Councillor Barker, she said these things. She spoke about our town centre library. She used an anecdote of more people using the, the, town the, the town centre library as a shortcut than using it for a library, as a justification for shutting libraries. Interestingly, she was talking about the wrong library. The town centre one isn't due to be cut. And when I challenged her on that, she said, well, when I visited, once, when I visited, I saw somebody wheel their bike in one door and out the other door. She quickly retracted when I pointed out that as a teacher of children whose behaviour had been so bad, they were ex not only excluded from schools, but excluded from pupil referral units and had to be taught in the community, which 
mentioned libraries. I spent two years at Harlow Town Centre Library and I can tell you it's very well used. And there is no other facility for these children. <coughs> she said, tier four libraries will be shut. No consultation, we will consult, but tier four libraries will be shut. She said, um, Councillor Garnet, that tier three um, libraries would be offered to people. And you spoke about empowering people. I drilled down on what she meant by that. She meant Essex would provide some books to tier three libraries. But the people in the community had to either buy or rent the building. They had to staff the building. They had to pay the electricity and the gas and the council tax for the building. She might as well have said tier three libraries will be shut. That's three out of five libraries. And I have to say, um, Councillor Charles, you were right when you said Old Harlow Library is well used. Tide Green Library is used more than Old Harlow. Um, and she also said that only online responses can be guaranteed to be heard. <coughs> Which is a shame, isn't it? Because so many of our library users use libraries because they don't have broadband at home. I suppose they can go to the library to submit their um, online response to the library closures, um, but they better hurry up and do it while there's still libraries to use the online services in. Um, Councillor Johnson, my children use Tide Green li libraries. Um, there's an equal opportunities issue here which Essex County Council are aware of. Um, they're disproportionately used by young children, young mothers, the unemployed and the least well off. And neither you or I fall into any of those categories, which is why we don't do it. But you should go and visit libraries, because they do have art exhibitions. They do. They have um, writers come in to talk about their writing. There's a whole host of things going on. If you would attend some of the many things that are going on, perhaps a footfall would increase. Um, but the serious point here is, yes, the total usage has fallen. But the core group that really need the libraries are still using them. I'll give you an example. If you are a mother with children and you want to choose a school, an Essex school, you have to apply online. And if you don't have the finances for broadband, that means using a library. If you want to book school dinners for your children, you have to do it a week in advance online. Now look, I for one found of that. It doesn't matter. Actually, you've got one minute. No problem. I'll finish in a minute. Okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> for me, because I can afford to make pack lunches. I curse myself, make the pack lunch, no problem. But for the very poorest, those children, those parents whose children are on free school meals, who don't have access to the internet, there are children that will go hungry because Essex are denying access to free broadband. Look, Councillor Garnet, you said nobody on this side wants libraries closed. I take you at your word on that. I hope the Tory Essex County Councillors on that side attend that meeting and they vote against these closures. Words here are fine. Let's see you be there and voting to keep them open. Thank you. Thank you.
with the amendment um, about the leader and the opposition leader uniting on that letter, okay? So those in favour of this motion, can you raise your hands, please? Okay. I think that's, that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Right. One more motion. Okay. This motion is going to be proposed by Councillor Chris Vance. Vince and it's the Maples Respite Care Home and the um, seconded by Councillor Jean Clark, I understand? Yes? Right, okay. Councillor Clark, can you propose it? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, very often, um, and as much by my own party as probably the opposition, I've been accused of uh, treating every speaking opportunity like some sort of call to arms. Um, so instead of, instead of telling you this evening what I feel so strongly, that we need to do what we can as a council to protect all respite services, I'm just going to read out a statement I received from Tracy, who is a parent uh, who utilises the maples. And I'm really, really gently touched that Tracy um, has come along this evening uh, with her son. Um, and I would really um, recommend that any councillors at the end of this meeting, uh, hopefully Tracy comes long even for you, if uh, councillors would, would take the opportunity to speak to Tracy at the end of this uh, meeting, I think she would really appreciate that, and I would really appreciate that as well. I just hope that I do you justice. Um, so Tracy said, for someone in my position, as a single mother, on dialysis seven nights a week, this is my lifeline. My son uh, is, is a teenager, uh, should be going out with his friends, like any ordinary teenager. But to, due to a host of complex needs, that's not possible. He needs 24-hour care. The Maples gives us, children, us parents respite to recharge our batteries. It's truly a lifeline. The children get a break from their parents and have sleepovers at the Maples with their friends, which is something, as parents, we couldn't provide. Also, the staff there are brilliant. They take the children on outings, and cater for their individual needs. Despite what we have been told, the alternative services that have been offered, like foster care, would not work. They can't provide the level of support that the Maples does. There is a perfectly good, purpose-built building here in Harlow, catering for all of our children's needs. Do the right thing. These children need the support that the Maples offers, not have it taken away from them. The words lifeline, Tracy's words, not mine, I think resonate the most with me, and I hope it resonates with this council. Being the parent of such a special young person really is a 24 7 job. And having spoken to parents and staff of the Maples, I know how desperate they are to protect the centre from further cuts. And I ask you, council, I plead. Heck, I'll beg if I have to. Support this motion, support the Maples, and support Tracy and her son. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Clark, do you wish to um, <coughs> speak now? Yes, I'd like to second it, Chair. Um, but first, with a question. Why is Essex County Council picking on the most vulnerable in society when making cuts or reducing provision? And we've just seen in the whole library discussion uh, motion that's particularly affecting elderly people, young children, young people without facilities at home, uh, some seeking warm warm shelter and so on. Um, and this is clearly in that category. It's part of a general national trend with care homes closing to, at a very disturbing rate, um, partly of the elderly, but also there is a crisis in support for children with special educational needs and disabilities. And there is a funding shortfall of £1.6 million. Pounds. The government has provided a sticking plaster, not enough to meet the demand for specialist support and facilities for children. 
working with complex needs such as the maples. When I talked to um, the manager and others of the maples, I am told that it is undersubscribed. And yet from other sources I've heard that it's oversubscribed. I've been told repeatedly there is no need to worry because it's undersubscribed. It has two fully staffed flats um, which are underused and there, there are no cuts, um, no effect on staff. And social workers are just not referring young people to the centre. But you don't just halve facilities and cut the budget without consequences. If it was the case, I should ask why are social workers not referring people or young families to <coughs> Maples? It completely goes against the national trend of increasing needs. And yes, if you can squeeze them into one flat, it may work for a limited amount of time, but where is the scope for an emergency need, the sudden brief need for a period of care? It is critical for carers, as we've seen already, and we know that there's a committed, dedicated staff to have a sen sensitive staff, sensitive to the needs of children in wel a welcoming, safe environment, and that is what is being provided in the Maples, as we've already seen from the uh, case of Tracy. Essex County Council has form in this matter. In 2012, they drastically cut residential care homes of young people in Harlow. And this had a devastating effect on the young people. It increased, uh, it, it included writing of a despairing letter. Councillor Clark, you've got one minute. Oh. Uh, a despairing letter to save the unit to the pr Prime Minister, but there is no stay of in, in execution. They were split up and dispersed far and wide away from their friends, and the staff, some staff, never fully recovered from the loss of a worthwhile job. We don't want that to be a thin end of the wedge. This proposal can lead to a complete closure of the Maples, a valued local facility, valued by the community, and especially by the young people and the families themselves, as we've seen. And we ask, indeed beg, Essex County Council to um, reconsider this devastating cut Thank you, uh, Thank you very much. I mean, clearly this is a, an emotional uh, motion, um, uh, and it's, it's quite sensitive over, over the, this particular issue. But we have to look at the history of this. This decision was made several years ago by the Tory County Council when they changed the criteria in relation to admissions uh, uh, around respite care. Um, so cuts do have consequences, and they do have significant and direct consequences. There is an absolute critical need for respite care. Uh, <coughs> this isn't just about the young person. It is about the family and the community that cares for, for them. These are very unique and beautiful special people. Some of the most vulnerable in our community some of the most needed in our community. But they are the ones that we treasure, and they are the ones that we love. And these are the people that we need to stand up and stand tall and say that respite is critical and this centre is critical for this area. 
the burden to the parents and the, um, to the community is vast. It's impossible to find the right words about the impact and effect for 24-7 what families have to do. But they do it with care and they do it with compassion. Respite is a lifeline. It is so essential. As a healthcare professional myself, I know the implications and the consequences of getting this wrong. These respite is not only to give respite for the family, but it's about early intervention. It's early opportunity. It's addressing issues before they become a big problem. We don't know what it's like unless you know it. And as uh, Chris has said, and the person in the audience, they know it. And we get it, and we have to listen to it, and we have to respond to it. Sadly, this is yet another bad decision made by Essex County Council. This community must stand up, and we must hold the hand of friendship and care to these families and these children. Because if we do not do that, what does it say about us as community <coughs> leaders? But what does it say about our society? We have to protect, we have to support, and we have to get Essex County Council to realise, as Chris has said and the lady said, respite is a lifeline. It is a lifeline. Let's not cut it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Can I also welcome Tracy and her son here this evening? It's been a lively debate already, but I hope that this debate pours out some of the issues that you're most concerned about. Caring for a loved one is a special and often rewarding uh, profession, in my view, and a commitment in your life. But it can also be very tiring, making big demands on you physically and mentally. Now, there is well-trodden arguments about the impact on carers, and big organisations with charities like Carers UK, who advocate strongly for young and older carers, have looked into the impacts that are faced by carers looking after loved ones. And I have to say, it makes very grim reading um, the impacts it places on people's health and well-being. I come to this debate this evening as someone who works as a director <coughs> in the health and social care space. So to me, having been on the ground, met carers, and actually seen some of the conditions people work in, I can talk from my own personal perspective about some of the situations that I, myself, vocally campaign against with my own government. What I would say tonight, um, as part of this conversation, I have myself commissioned a national UK-wide study on the demands on carers. So for me, this is a very personal debate, and I'm grateful for the contribution by Tracy this evening. Respite care is important for a range of um, reasons, and I want to just reflect on them for a brief moment, particularly around physical and mental recuperation and how important that is in our local community. It gives renewal and relaxation. People neglect that, but that's a really important thing for carers. It gives them space to get away, to go and see their friends, their family, and to readjust and look after their own well-being in life. It gives them perspective, time to think about what they want to achieve as part of being a caregiver and what their life ambitions are. And it's about engagement. We need to ensure as a community that these people who provide an important contribution in our community are valued. And that's something that is incredibly important. Now, I do have to say, I think that Essex County Council have given very clear assurances over the Maples Respite Centre. And I have to say, Councillor Dick Madden, the Cabinet Member for Children and Families, has always spoken with integrity, <coughs> respect, and consideration to these matters. He's a great man, and someone that I respect, and has actually been to Harlem and has engaged with the issues that are presented to us this evening. Now he has categorically said this, no families will be left worse off as a result of this change. The decision to temporarily provide services from one flat at the centre allows us to maintain our current level of operation and offer short breaks for
for all families receiving care at the Maples. Some of the other considerations we need to reflect on this evening is Essex County Council's ultimate aim for you. And that is to develop a broader range of respite offer to the county and in Harlow, thereby increasing the choice and flexibility available to all families. Under consideration at the moment, our measures to loosen the restrictions around how families may spend their direct payments that are made to them so that they are able then to figure out what they want to do with their own respite arrangements. It's given them better greater choice and flexibility, which I think is encouraging. I'm proud that in Harlow we have one of two we have one of two respite facilities in the county. And long may that continue. The issue tonight is this. It is the height of irresponsibility to whip up a false storm and scare vulnerable people to attract a cheap headline. And the party opposite, the party opposite to bring this debate up when there will be no change in the provision offered to families is frankly wrong. I speak to this as someone who is, cares deeply about social care, not only in Harlem, but in this country. So lend some perspective on the reality of these issues and don't whip up false storms. Thank you, Chair. Um, as I said at the start of the evening, when the Chair asked for declarations of interest, I've declared an interest in this amount, and I'm happy to repeat that interest. I have family using Maple's Respite Centre, so maybe I'm not a great person to talk about this. Maybe I'm probably the best person to talk about this, because actually I see the effect of what happens at the Maple's Respite and the effect it has on the families. It's what the county council are offering, and, and I will start with Councillor Charles' remark about Councillor Madam and expecting them us to raise this as a motion. I find that as an appalling statement. Let's get some facts on the table. He is correct in saying there will be no cut of service to the parents, thank you, Councillor Charles, to the parents and the children that come in and use that service. What is not told us tonight is what the county council have done is cut the waiting list. Two years ago, they stopped taking new income into Maples Respite Centre. When children get to 16, they leave child care and they go to adult social care. So thank you. So what happens is, as there's no new intake. So the last couple of years of people that are using that service, they will then leave and no one will replace them. That's why the beds are being cut in half, because the half the county council are halfway through a programme of shutting this service altogether. When the last children leave, when they get to that age, there is no facility at all. Can I remind people, this is not just about Harlow, this is not just even about West Essex. This covers the whole of Essex, this centre. There are children currently using it from Colchester. Their families are happy to bring them all that way because how important this service is. So, to Councillor Madden and to Councillor Charles, it's a disgrace for us to raise this issue tonight. What about the next generation of vulnerable children? What about the next generation of families that need that support? What the county council are trying to do, and what they're trying to hoodwink us into, is a situation that simply says no one's going to lose that. But actually, no one loses that, it's currently there. Anyone else that comes along will just be abandoned. That facility, and I've seen with my own thing, it offers group activities. It offers social contact. It's an absolute lifeline, as Hanford can see. Some families that use that facility, they have siblings at home. That gives the parents that time alone to interact with the siblings, while knowing fully well that the other children are being well looked after and supervised by specially trained people. It's an absolute must. It's an absolute must. As a community leader, not just for this town, but the whole of Essex, we put some facts on the table and support this motion. Thank my finance head on, of having two fully staffed open flats that are being underused, when you can have one and use those staff, use that time to better services. Councillor Charles has already spoken about some of the things that the county is under consideration at the moment. And on the 20th of November uh, at Maples, uh, the senior management met with um, service users, 
parents um, and explained and answered questions, but also took suggestions from the users themselves about how the service could also be widened uh, and, and, um, uh, and made better. Uh, and those are, are under consideration at the moment. And I, I believe Dick when he says that no family will be left worse off. And I believe him when he says he wants to improve the service. Some of the other changes that they're looking at making at the moment is around um, expanding the facility for um, respite care within the family's own home. Meaning that children don't have to be taken out of their home environment. <laughs> but, but, par but parents can still have that I'm, respite I'm chance. I'm sorry, but I'm, 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 I'm so Essex are also looking at, looking at the use of, um, as Councillor Charles has said, using uh, the personal payments in different ways and the ability to purchase from other providers um, whatever is the best solution for the family. I've spoken to Dick a couple of times this week in advance of this motion, just to kind of get my head around exactly what the changes were. And I can't understand Councillor Lynch against his campaign. Do you know what's even worse is that he's launched a campaign, he's talked about it in our local media, he's talked about it, I believe, in the chunks of media. But according to Nick Madden, who is the man in charge of all this, Councillor Vince hasn't contacted him. He hasn't contacted Dick to speak to him, he hasn't written to Dick to speak to him. I think it's wholly inappropriate to bring this motion here and politicise this issue without even having the courtesy to raise your concerns first and hear first hand from the cabinet member what the actual situation is. I think I end tonight, Chair, on repeating the words that Dick Medden has used in public. No families will be left worse off as a result of this change. I'm sorry that they were back. This um, um, the Maples was uh, built in 2008, so it's 10 years old. It cost 1.6 million quid to build it. It was uh, built and developed in response to the need to provide short-term care for children with disabilities and their parents in and around Harlow. And from what we've heard today, it's also for other, other parents from across Essex. Now, I don't believe that statistically, the number of people with disabilities will have changed that much in 10 years. I don't believe that even with um, the flexibilities that are built in with individual budgets, etc., etc., that there would have been that much in terms of change of demand upon, change of potential demand upon this particular sort of resource. So I would want to see real evidence as to why, as to, as to um, the way that the, the way that that demand, if that demand has changed, and how has it changed? What's caused the reasons for that change? Before one gets to a position where one is saying we will now be uh, looking to close half of this resource because they want to use foster carers. Uh, what? They may well be so they're, they're wanting to steer people in the direction of a, you know, a particular a, a, a particular resource, whether it be foster carers, whether it be whatever. Now I really want to see what evidence there was that that's what the parents want, that that's what you know. And if there's contra evidence, then it would seem to me, and that from, from what I've heard in the debate so far, it appears that there is contra evidence. It would seem to me that it would be premature to go down the route of closing down the half, you know, half of one resource. So I would ask that, you know, in the spirit of um, cross party, etc., etc., that I would ask our county councillors to go back and re-examine the, the councillors that are also county councillors to go back and ask to see what. The, critically asked to see what is the evidence that there's been a change in the demand? When did that demand change? And why did that demand change? If, having got that, they can then, uh, they, they can then show that these were the particular arguments, etc., and present that to the public in, in a way, and present that to the parents in a way that stacks up, then if necessary, you know, if it all stacks up, then so be it. But I, su I suggest 
that at, the, at the moment what we're actually seeing is people being, for want of a better word, manipulated into using other resources with an agenda to close down a particular resource at the moment. So that's all I would say. If there's 1.8 million individuals, it's worth spending 1.8 million in 2008. They can't have been that, that wrong on their projections then. I would anticipate that there's still that demand there if you go looking for it. Thank you, Chair. Um, let's accept form with regards to the Maples. They tried to shut it in 2013. Um, they offered alternatives foster care, care in the home, purchase from, out, from other providers. It was made clear to them in the very vocal process at the time, but there were only two such respite. Um, homes in Essex. So for many people that meant leaving the county. But they stopped their plans to close it when one prominent campaigner said, whatever the alternative provision, whatever the alternative provision being suggested, the Maples is incredibly important and parents and children will suffer if it closes. He said, the Maples Children Respite Centre in Harlow is an integral part of the community that provides comfort and security to families and children with special needs. The Maples Respite Centre should be kept open as it's unlikely that similar alternative provisions will be fine, found and that its closure will be detrimental to its hard-working staff, volunteers, parents and children for which the Maples acts as a life. I will do everything I can, he said, to avoid the centre's closure. That prominent campaigner was Robert Halford, the Tory MP for Harlow in 2013. And Essex County Council dropped their plans. But now what they're trying is closure by stealth. It's like a school, isn't it? If you say um, to the parents of an area, we, you can no longer send your school to, I don't know, Pear Tree Mead School. It's closed to a new intake. And then five years down the line say, well, do you know what? Attendance at Pear Tree Mead School? <laughs> Clearly we need to shut it. That's exactly what Essex have done. An attempt to close, close a vitally needed community resource by stealth. They haven't got the nerve to face up to it and say, we are closing this. They're using subterfuge and trickery. And they're doing it against the most needy people in our society. I condemn this closure. I condemn the tricks that Essex are using in trying to bring it about. And I condemn both Councillor Johnson and Councillor Charles, who know who know full well that when they talk about a reduction in demand, that has been deliberately engineered by Essex, who have stopped any more referrals. This centre needs to be preserved. years. He's one of the most trustworthy and decent councillors you'll ever know. <laughs> so I don't, can't sit here and listen to all this rubbish that's coming out of your, your no. mouth. He, he said, he's great, great. Sure. He is fair and honest. Sorry, Chair. And if he says something... He's already seconded. Why is he on his feet? Who's talking to you? I'm talking. Sorry. Sorry. Point of order. <laughs> I'm just saying that he's fair and honest. Sorry, Chair. He's just winding up. Sorry. 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 No, so we've had a second. We were saving the second to the end of the debate. And why are you on the feet? Through the chair. Okay. Councillor Garner, how much time do we have? Three minutes. Thank you, Chair. I've known Councillor Garner for a number of years, too, and I have a lot of time for Councillor Garner, actually. Um, but I do disagree with him on, on, on part of his argument, and I think it's, it's, it's somewhat flawed. 
Um, I think clearly, and I think Councillor Edwards said it best, that um, clearly there isn't uh, suddenly less uh, young people with, with severe complex needs that, that need centres like the Maples. Um, and actually the reality is that um, people, uh, parents have been, um, have been uh, directed to other services, um, but they so might be in not as good as the Maples, and that's why it looks as though there isn't a demand for Maples. And my concern is that we see the services half and in two years' time, we see them growing together and we're told that that service isn't needed, which is why I brought this um, to uh, council today. I didn't bring it with any particular party political point. Um, I used to, uh, can I finish? Can I finish? I'm sorry, I, I know I'm a text, but I'm used to being able to finish what I'm saying before people talk. That's all right, you. Thanks. Um, um, so, yeah, um, Peter mentioned uh, placard waving. Um, I, don't, I do a lot more than just placard waving, actually. Um, I think that it's important this to count council does find funding. Um, the alternatives cost money as well, like foster care, it's not cheap, so there's funding there. Um, we also know that council have frozen council tax for two years. Um, uh, sorry, four years, in fact, sorry, four years, thanks to Mike. Um, there is a, a lack of funding there as well. Um, but I don't want to make a part of the point, and uh, it was really uh, interesting to hear the words um, from Mark Ingle that uh, were said by Robert Halfram a lot long ago. And I would welcome talking to Dick Madden, I'd welcome talking to uh, Robert Halfram. I did actually contact my uh, county councillors, um, but they didn't get a response on that. Um, but I want to finish. I've received something on the, on the, um, on the live, I don't believe I've received something on the uh, respite care um, council help. If I did, then I apologise, but I, I'm not aware that I did. Um, I'm not aware that I did. Can I finish? Thanks. Um, but I want to finish, uh, actually, by just saying um, a little thank you to Tracy and Cameron for coming along this evening. Um, uh, it's obviously a very major subject for you. It's the major subject for at least one of the councils sitting in front of me, and it's a pretty major subject for me as well. Um, I uh, work with a lot of young people, uh, I've got work with uh, young people across severe needs, and uh, I appreciate how much of a lifeline, and we use that word, those words again, lifeline, it is for people like Tracy and Cameron, so thank you for coming. I hope councillors will take the opportunity to speak to uh, Tracy and Cameron at the end of this meeting. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, Chair, I stand for you to bring any votes.